and the second. Okay, integer ILP is very useful not just because uh, it makes more sense to add those integer constraints, but uh, the most useful thing are those binary variables. Okay, we haven't used them yet. Binary variables are a special kind of uh, integer variables that they assume only values of uh, zero or one. Um, so if you if you from if you have like a electrical engineering background, you know this for sure, right? Binary zero or one. Okay, and uh, those variables are very useful in a number of practical ways. Okay, let's look at this problem first. I'll ask you same. I'll ask you to read the problem statement first. Think about what you would do for one or two, two or three minutes, and we'll talk about them together. Okay, so what's the problem about? What's the decision here? Okay, okay, which project to choose to be found? Okay, um, after chapter five, this uh, coming up with this decision variable may, should not be very difficult um, because we already encountered some problem with the binary, um, binary result, right? Like in the shortest path problem or even that uh, complex uh, equipment replacement problem, the result is zero or one, say choose or not, right? So in this case, it's the same. We're looking at those five, six projects, say, okay, should it be chosen or not? As it indicated in the problem, it's really clear that uh, uh, they are unable to undertake all six projects, so they can only choose from them. And uh, even though the decision is which ones to choose, we translate them into whether to choose X, uh, project one or not, whether to choose X, uh, project two or not, whether to choose uh, project three or not. Okay, so we will have those X one, two, three, four, five, and six representing whether to choose a project or not. And uh, for binary variables, let me just uh, use this here. For binary variables, we usually define them in this way. Okay, so this is the, the, the standard way to define the binary variables. Say so xi equals to be one if project i is selected equal to zero otherwise. Okay, the other way to do it would be xi represents whether to Select project I. One means yes. Zero means no. Okay. So when you decide when you dis, uh, define the decision variables, so which should be binaries, um, either way works. Okay. Then We go back to look at the objective function. Okay, so we have the decision variables already. <coughs> Did they say objective function somewhere? What's the objective? What's the, what's the objective usually to, to carry out some project? To make money, right? Okay, so what's the, what's the money making part embedded in this table here? Expected net present value, right? Okay, so expected net present value. And each of those different projects have different expected net present value summarized. Okay, even though they didn't say what's the objective from a common sense, okay. Especially you guys are engineering management student. You know that we choose those R and D projects, trying to maximize the expected MPV, okay. Then, how do we write the objective function? Then how do we know which ones are included? Say, so for example, if X one, if project one is chosen, okay, then this one hundred and forty one thousand dollars will be included in the total MPV, right? If it's not chosen, then it will not be included. 
Same for the expected NPV for the other projects. If the project 5 is chosen, then this uh, 265 will be included in the total NPV. If it's not chosen, then it won't. So use this page here. Let's see what's my color. Okay, so we want to maximize. Uh, I just put it here total NPV. And uh, the N total NPV can be, so potential will be this plus this plus this plus all the way to 172. Uh, except that we don't know which ones should be included. Okay, if the project is chosen, then this should be included. It, if it's not chosen, it should not be included. Now how do we write the objective function? Using that decision variable that we define, right? We define, say, okay, x1 being 0 or 1. If it's not chosen, its value will be 0. So if we multiply these two values here, this 0 will cancel out this uh, MPV value. So if project 1 is not chosen, which means x1 will be equal to 0, then its MPV will not be included in this total sum here. Okay, but if it is chosen, then 1 times this 141, it will be included. Does that make sense? Same for x2. Okay, if it is chosen, then 1 times this. If it's not chosen, then MPV will not be included. Okay, so object function will be to maximize 1 x 141 times x1, keeping in mind that x1 will be a binary variable, will be binary value, 0 or 1, okay, plus 187 x2 plus, plus 121x3 plus 83x4 plus 265 x5, 127 x6. Okay, so you can see here we, we, we kind of like did a function that should be expressed using an if then, if then else, several if then else statements, right? If we don't use this binary variable here, we would say, okay, the maximized MPV will be if project one is chosen, then it's a one for one plus. If x2 is chosen, then we need to include this one. If x3 is chosen, we need to include this one. Here we use the binary variable to turn the value on or off. Okay, if we turn it on, we, that means x value will be 1. We include it. If we want to turn it off, we don't want to include it, then x value will be 0. Okay, so binary variables are very helpful. Then subject to the constraints. So the constraints are that uh, if you invest in a certain R&D project, for example, project one, from year one to five, in each year, some investment will be required, okay? You can't just say, okay, I invest in the first three years and suddenly in four years, I run off money. I cannot fund this one. Then all those money will be wasted, okay? If you choose a project, uh, in this, in this problem, okay, of course there were other methods that say, okay, you, have, you can cut a project if it's not profitable. Um, say in the second year, you do a stage gate model that uh, evaluate the project's return, okay. Or we, or we have like options choice, okay. Um, that's something that we, we will cover in um, another decision making class. But here we'll just assume that once you choose to invest in the project, you are committed to the project in the next five years. Okay. Then, the company has uh, $250,000 available to invest in new project, which means currently, okay, in the first year, it has uh, 250 here. So, for anyone that's uh, chosen, the required investment that's going to happen in first one should not exceed this uh, 250, right? Because that's the money we have now, 
to invest in the first year. And if you add up all of those ones, it exceeds 250. And that's why they said they don't have money to fund all the six. OK. Same for 75,000 for year two. OK. 75 here. And uh, 50,000 for year three, four, and five. OK. So that means uh, you don't only need to satisfy requirement for the first year, which is 250. But all the following years, the project that you selected, the, 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 the amount of capital required for the project that you selected should not exceed the total available. OK. So for the first year, mm, Should not the amount of uh, capital requir requirement should not exceed two fifty, but uh, how do we know if x if seventy five should be included? The same way, right? How do we know if we need to include this in year one's budget? If you select project one, right? So if you select project one, that means your x one will be one. So it will be included in the budget. If you don't select it, it will be zero. So this 75 value will be turned off. OK. 90 x2, 60 x3, 30 x4, 100 x5 plus 50 x6. So all the value from this column here. And we have all those x values being binary, 0 or 1. 0 then will cancel the value out. It's the same. It's consistent all the way. OK, from whether to include that NPV in the objective function and for all the years, whether that budget, whether that capital investment is needed to be included in the total budget, they are consistent. If x1 is 0, that means it will be all 0 here. And so the NPV will not be included, and the requirements for this capital will not be included. If it's one, then all of them will be included. OK, so the objective function we already defined, the constraints will be in this format. OK, so that will be from year one to five. And we use all the binary x variables to turn on or off those capital investments required for all the projects. And the right hand side will be uh, the, the, the capital uh, budget available. Then we need to, even though you specify the decision variable will be 0 or 1, you need to add in the constraint part, OK, or x, i must be binary. OK, and uh, in Excel, you do this <coughs> by Adding a constraint, say add. I just assume, OK. Here, say if those decision variables need to be binary, so you will stack this one, B, I, N. So it will specify the decision variables will be binary, will be 0 or 1 value. OK. And you don't need to select that integer, because the binary is already specified. OK. Cancel. This is how to specify. So with this, with this problem, we introduce uh, the use of binary variables as a special integer constraint. OK. Any question for this problem? Is there an alternative way of solving this? Alternative way of solving this? Uh, so I was thinking about it in a different light before you start going. OK. OK. I think it will be very, very difficult if not impossible. Yeah, it will be very difficult. I'm, I'm trying to think ways of identifying the right methodology to use. Uh huh. Problem, right. Trying to exactly. Things. Was there something that indicated to you, all right, if we define these decision variables as binary, mm -hmm. it would make it easier to solve this problem? Uh huh. Because okay. initially I was thinking about, all right, 
why can't we look at uh, the net value? And we could do maximizing uh, the total gains that you could get minus whatever investment that you're, uh, you're thinking about for that. OK, so the question, I repeat this uh, question. So the question is that uh, whether there is a way that, uh, to identify the right method for a problem. OK, for example, for this one, uh, how do we know that uh, using the binary variable will be the right way to solve this problem? And the Beckham is thinking about that uh, starting do some analysis from the MPV and identify from the MPV. I think what you are trying to do is kind of like uh, what the algorithm is trying to do for you. Hold on. <laughs> From the beginning again. Okay, I think th the answer for your question is already mentioned in the problem statement. There's a sentence that says Mark must determine which of the projects to select. So it says that you know he may select some and he may not select some. So it's yeah, I think this sentence shows that some of the variables are zero and some gain gets values. Um, but you can. You, you can have a, an optimum solution defining the problem in, in a different way as well. Now, you're setting binary conditions to select or deselect a specific project. Mm -hmm. But if you do a sum product of what was, like what was generated, which is the NPV, minus what you would have spent. Sum product of in the, what? No, uh, not the sum product, I, I misspoke. So minus you're you're looking at the difference between the spent, the EPV, the money that's generated, minus the money that's spent for that year. <laughs> right? <laughs> so the optimum solution is maximizing that difference, the difference between the amount of money that's generated minus the amount of R&D development you, you cost. You get you know, money back without investing on it. Yes. So That's why we're looking at the difference. How much you spent? So you have you want to spend on all so of them. Well, well, we'll we'll take it off. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have all that. Let me write it down, and we can we can have a, a group discussion, a forum. Maybe. Okay. Okay. So do, do that's you good. Have an um, I think what you are trying to do is kind of like uh, what the algorithm is trying to solve for you, because uh, by Analyzing it, you're trying to find the optimal solution, right? When the problem becomes really complex, like we have this bounded rationality, we, we just can, cannot handle that complexity. And uh, the problem gets complex, we won't be able to find it. I think like in chapter three, I asked you guys to read the book about one of the problems, the transportation problem, it talk about heuristic. And I talk about that in one class. Heuristic is kind of like a rule of thumb method. You don't use the algorithm, but you kind of use your own analysis based on logical analysis. You find out what's the optimal solution. That's, uh, that's, that's uh, how to say, that's possible for some of the problems, um, but not, does not guarantee the optimal solution. But for some really complex problems, uh, heuristic is the only way to solve them. Actually, some of the algorithms use heuristic, right? Hossein? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so, um, but for this problem, like when you said, when do we know whether to use a binary variable, the zero or one? Um, for this problem, it's like, uh, it's kind of indicates so whether to choose, to, to choose it or not. It's kind of like in chapter five problem, like the shortest path, which way to go? The decision is which way to go, but if you translate it to, okay, there are so many ways, whether we should go to A, if we go A, then we will not go to B. We'll not go through C. So will be one of the road will be chosen, so that's kind of like a one value, and the other not, not chosen will be zero value. So if uh, a problem indicates, say, okay, which one to choose, or whether to choose this one, 
to me, it's kind of like, OK, you need to use the binary variable. It's a, it's a 0, 1 decision, choose this or not. OK, but uh, um, as you go through more problems, you kind of like de develop that uh, insight. Or even, what's that? Like when you, when you see the problems, oh, I know. That's an integer linear programming problem. Or oh, that's a network problem. Yeah. Yeah, or like that's a MOLP. So the more problem you see, you develop that sense. They go, OK, I need to use this method. Yeah. Or which method is easier. MOLP, that's multiple mm -hmm. objectives. That's kind of uh -huh. easy to define. MOLP is easy to define, right. Right, even right. you have multiple goals for uh -huh. the programming. That, you know, there are some limitations right. in mm -hmm. the problem statement that tells you which direction it is. Uh -huh. It varies from the get, unless you know where you are heading. Mm -hmm. you, you knew how to set it up from the beginning. That's why you were thinking about it in that, in that light. Mm -hmm. I saw it. It wasn't clear to me. That's why. OK. Oh, that's because, uh, that's because it's the first time you see it. OK. okay. And uh, also, there are different ways to solving different, the same problem, right? I give one optional exercise problem in chapter 5. I don't know whether you guys did it. That's the investment problem. Exactly the same as the one we did in chapter 3, right? And then that problem in chapter three, we use the table format to solve. And I remember like when BG was there in my class, she asked me, OK, well, how, how do I tell I need to use the network problem? OK, I said, it depends on the way you formulate it. Like the way, say, if you, if you look at the problem and you formulate that network, then OK, so that goes to the network. But if you formulate it in the table format, so these are my requirements, then it's pretty natural you go with that the tab table format and the constraints. OK, so there are multiple ways of solving problems. But uh, for certain problems, uh, um, I would say a certain way will be much easier, like, uh, like in this one. The binary will be much easier. OK, mm -hmm. and like the equipment replacement problem. Um, that problem, if we introduce that in chapter 3, or I mean, if it's chapter 6, we can solve it in a different way. But using the network problem method will be much easier. Yeah, the multiple ways will will get the same solution. Okay, it's just yeah. a matter of difficulty of the two. Right, exactly. Matter of difficulty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for this problem, any other questions? We get some good discussions. Okay. So but binary variables are even more useful than just turning say include the menu ma value or not. Okay. See. All the OR problems need to be formulated in a standard format, which means, uh, as I said, you cannot just put a statement there. OK, you cannot put, say, OK, non-negativity, non or say, inflow minus offflow equals to supply or demand. You need to write out using the decision variables. OK, same as uh, some situations. We're going to look at a lot of problems that's really interesting, challenging, and in which you have to have those uh, constraints that represent a statement such as uh, if this happens then this else another okay or either or situation we can just write those statements as a constraints okay binary variables will help us uh, formulate those kind of uh, statements that's why i love ilp <laughs> okay for example Of projects one, three, and six, no more than one may be selected. I'll ask you guys to think about how to formulate the constraint for this one. So we'll, um, we'll just define x3, x1, 3, 6 being binaries. OK, being binaries, 0 or 1, um, representing the project selected or not. OK, but so here we have this constraint. Say, for example, from the previous problem, the manager says, OK, 1, 3, 6, no more than 1 may be selected. You could do a sum, like, this is equal to 1. Sum what? The sum of x1 plus x3 plus x6 equals 0. Yeah. Equal to 1 or? Equal less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. Great. Wow, you guys are great. OK. Exactly one must be selected. 
equal to one, right? Okay. A little more complex one. Four cannot be selected unless five is also selected. We went a little too fast here. <laughs> okay, maybe let me go back to here. How, why, why we had this constraint? No more than one can be selected. Um, talking about here will help you figure out this one. Okay. So no more than one. We don't know whether it's one or three or six. But we know only one of them. Uh, I mean, no more than. So that means uh, for the x, one, three, six value. Let me just uh, get out of those ones. Okay. So that means for those value, if x1 is 1, that means 3 and 6 need to be 0, right? No more than 1, OK? If this is 0, this can be 1, but this have to be 0. If this both are 0, this can be 1. Or another situation is all of them being 0. None of them get selected. So that's kind of like a way for you to start analysis if you are not, uh, if you can just get that constraint immediately out, OK? So with this, we think, OK, so the sum of them should be less than or equal to 1, OK? With this analysis here, let's think about this one. 4 cannot be selected unless 5 is also selected. x4 equal to x5. OK, so what we are saying that, uh, OK, if 4 is selected, which means it's 1, OK, then 5 has to be selected, 1. OK, so if 4 is not selected, by using this constraint, we are saying, OK, if you don't select 4, 5 should have be not be selected either, which is not right, right? Because we are only saying, the condition for 4 to be selected, the 5 is also selected. But the condition for 5 to be selected is not that 4 also be selected. Less than equal? OK. So with that analysis, OK, so if there's a 1, if we use less than equal to, x5 should be 1, right? If 4 is selected, 5 has to be. If 4 is 0, what happens to 5? OK, so if 4 is 0, 5 can be 0, either 0 or 1. So we are not constraining, say, 5 need to be not selected. OK, but so when we said there's a 4 to be 1, 5 will be forced to be 1 because uh, of this less than equal to sign. OK, so we use this to force x5 to be 1. Great. I'm so happy. You guys are pretty fast, so I think you should be doing well for this chapter. <laughs> if you learn hard. OK. OK, so that's, uh, that's, the, that's the condition. That's the constraint to, to do this one. OK, then with those exercises, I'm going to look at one more problem for today, okay.